Uh, Brett, before we were talking about, before I hit record, you, you said that uh, two things that stuck out to me. A, feet don't lie. And B, don't drink the same old wine in a brand new bottle. What does that have to do with New Balance in the sock <laughs> interview we just did? I just feel like there's too many people out there sipping the Super Trail shoe Kool-Aid because I have yet to really come across a bad review for this shoe. And like, well, I'm not going to say that this review is a bad review. It's our second review in a row that did not make the hundred mile cut. And if we were doing like shoe awards and there is an award for like shoe that I was most bummed out about, it would be the new balance super comp trail. This is probably the shoe that I was like most sad about because I wanted to love it so much, but then it was just like fighting me after run number one. So as with the Saucony Endorphin Rift, we are going to continue to talk about some of the shoes that maybe even didn't work for us. Um, and we'll only cut a full length shoe review short if it we both agree we're not running 100 miles in this shoe. Because, um, you know, like we just did, uh, what was the shoe? Oh, the Scarpa. The Scarpa Spin Planet. You put over 100 miles on it and I ran like 40. Because I, I was it. still still at least half of us was able to continue to run. Yeah. But if yeah, we're yeah. getting zero percent of us want to continue to run a hundred miles in the shoe, we're we're cutting it, we're cutting the review short, but we're still gonna do a little episode on it. Before we get going, um the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trail was provided to us by New Balance and Running Warehouse, but we're under no financial obligation to say whether we like a shoe or not because we want to keep these reviews authentic and beneficial for you. No one's going to get to preview or watch this footage before it gets published to YouTube. Finn, how many miles did you run in this shoe? I had to look down in in shame for a second. I I did 15 miles on three runs. I crushed you. (laughs) I ran ran 30 miles, and I actually did. One of them was like a 16-mile long run which i thought maybe that would like wake this shoe up but then it, it it did not um so that that's our testing mileage uh this shoe is 199 dollars and 99 cents according to the new balance website i'm just gonna round that up to an even 200 the double benjamin it is a trail super shoe after all so it's got to get into that price range uh my pair came in at 9.6 ounces or 270 grams in a men's us size 10 Stack height is 26 and a half millimeters in the forefoot, 36 and a half millimeters in the heel. So we're looking at a 10 millimeter drop for the shoe. The upper is a one piece engineered mesh, you know, very simple, thin upper. You know, it looks very much like a racing shoe. Um, There's a little bit of plastic overlay. I'm still kind of on the fence whether it actually does anything. Or if it's just there for show, like we were kind of talking offline how this is a pretty stylish shoe and like there's some geometric shapes and a little bit of orange flare along the side. And eh, I can't really tell if it does anything. (laughs) There's a little bit of, um, little bit of toe bumper, but it's mostly just to give the toe box some shape. I mean, it says toe protect in case you don't believe them, uh, but don't, don't rely on it too much. The tongue is gusseted uh, into the midfoot. It is very thin and has perhaps the biggest perforations I've ever seen in a a like running shoe tongue, which is, I mean, that's going to be awesome for breathability. No extra foam on the tongue. I do appreciate that there is two loops on the tongue to slide the laces through just to make sure that nothing is moving around. And we actually have a very traditional uh, plastic heel cup and kind of like a mediumly padded ankle collar, little uh, pull tab on the back. Appreciate that. Some Still some old school design elements on a trail shoe that should never really be gone ever. Like keep, just keep the pull tabs, you know. The midsole, this is uh, where I thought the magic was going to happen. You know, it's one, I think it's actually two pieces of New Balance's fuel cell foam, which have, Fuel cell foam has been one of my favorite foams of all time. Um, you know, the, the fuel cell version Rebel. of this is sweet. Yeah. yeah like yes. the, the, the SC Elite, um, their super shoe, like their marathon racer, and then their SC, uh, the super comp trainer, which is, I think this is 
very close to a super comp trainer, like trail equivalent. You know, my favorite shoe that New Balance has made with their fuel cell foam is the fuel cell rebel, which was their super lightweight, very simple, just like springy fun shoe. Like it's just so many smiles per mile. Like their ratio was off the charts. And I always wanted them to put fuel cell foam in a trail shoe. And it is in this one. There is also a carbon fiber plate, which is actually sandwiched in between kind of the two layers of foam. You can actually almost see where the two layers of foam are fused together. There's a line that goes all the way around the shoe where the two layers of foam are ultimately glued together. I'm actually, I was kind of playing with it. I'm pretty sure if I pulled really hard, I would be able to rip the bottom half of the shoe off. Don't, don't do that. Um, it's like in, it's like in Napoleon Diamond when, when she tries to get like the ship out of the bottle. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> and that's two reviews in a, not in a row. That's two reviews on this channel where you've screwed up that Napoleon Dynamite quote. <laughs> it's a Tupperware container. Sorry, Finn. it's a Tupperware container. It's a Tupperware container. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> so there's the carbon fiber plate. This carbon plate is actually one of the most flexible carbon plates of some of the trail super shoes that we've tested out. Like it's more flexible in the forefoot than the Hoka Tecton X. It's more flexible in the forefoot than the uh, Nike Ultra Fly. Yep. Um, so that's, again, was nifty. The outsole is perhaps one of the simpler Vibram uh, Mega Grip light base outsoles I've seen. So it's three pieces of rubber. Um, it seems like we normally see like bigger slabs, but, um, I really liked this outsole design. This is a new outsole design that I'd never seen where it's, it actually reminds me kind of like the, um, the Solomon, the S lab ultra three, where the lugs are kind of small, square, somewhat spread apart, like minimum viable amount of lugs, uh, just for the sake of weight savings. And like, you're not going to like, this is going to shed mud. Great. So really like that outsole design. Finn, why did you ultimately cut your testing short on this shoe? So I had three categories of issues with this shoe. Uh, the first is probably unique to me, maybe to you too, because we're both ultra runners. But it, this right out the gate doesn't feel like a long distance shoe because of the toe box snugness. I, at least in my experience, it fit on the smaller end of true to size. Um, my other yeah, issue, similar agree. to the... Yeah, I think it just it just runs short. Like it runs everyone, short. everyone needs to go up a half size. And I think, I think going up a half size probably would have fixed the upper issues. But that's definitely far from the only thing that, like, e yeah, need to cut this short. Um, um, yeah, we talked about it on on the Saucony Endorphin Rift review. Um, upper security is important. With this upper, I felt it was really difficult to lock in, especially around the forefoot. Could be to could be due to a relatively short lacing chain again. I got a lot of un, unwanted lateral movement in the forefoot. Um, pre conversational pace era, I actually I'm a big Hoka fan. I had similar issues in the Hoka Carbon Three X X Three, where the the mesh it sort of like sags in some areas, tightens in other areas. Generally, doesn't uniformly dial in. Um, and then I just felt like my foot was never securely on the platform. Like a yes. good trail shoe, it withstands forces in multiple directions. That was not the case here. There was not enough reinforcement here. I was getting a ton of medial collapse, especially in technical terrain with uneven footing in the three runs that I did. So that was a huge issue just in general in landing. Like I would be running in Liberty Park. I would get platform destabilization there as well. Um, so that was number two. Last thing, um, I was joking with you offline on my very last run in this shoe through Liberty Park. Uh, I got a piece of big league shoe stuck in the center of this energy arc. And it's just, it's just emblematic of how this shoe has a lot of issues shedding debris. I'm sure there's a lot of worse things you could step on on the trail, but they've cut this big deep ridge into where the carbon plate resides. It's just like they had to show it off this way. And it's, yep. it's more than big enough to collect stuff. So those are my three areas of, of issue. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are all great, very valid points. Yeah. So, um, immediately when I put the shoe on, I was like, damn, it's short. Like my toe is, this is a 10 and like my toe is almost right at the very front, but it was like, okay. But with some shoes, if the upper really locks me down, 
I'll, I'll be able to still run in it. And then I did like one trail run where all of my trail runs are, you know, up and down. They're not flat. Um, and then descending, like my toe is just straight to the front. So then I like untied it, tied it tighter, toes still going to the front. And like, kind of like you said, there was no amount of tightening you could do to lock the foot down. And that's because like the, where they placed some of the volume of materials on this upper, I just thought was kind of off. So like, um, you know, you can see the silhouette of the shoe is actually very sleek and cool looking because it like goes all the way down to the toe. Like that's sick, but like feet don't, feet aren't shaped like that. They usually kind of go down and then they flatten out and you have like your forefoot and your toe. So like the, the amount of volume of, of upper tapered down, I think too much to the toe box for one, which even if the shoe didn't run short, you'd still probably get snugness in towards the toes but two on the medial side there is too much material on the medial side of the arch so even when i would tie it really tight it would start to crank down on the lateral side of my foot but then it would like push my foot over more over the medial side and then it would just get kind of baggy on the medial side um and what that ultimately led to was my foot just not sitting on the platform. Like we can even see, like if I hold it up to the camera, you can see the whole shoe is starting to tilt along the medial side. Like that's just tilting yeah. inward. And the biggest problem I had was unless I was running uphill or flat, the shoe felt so unstable, which I'm, I don't do only uphill runs and I don't really do flat trail runs. So like I need the shoe to be able to at least get me down the hill. And when I was running down the hill, it just would not the, the, whatever the like combination of, I don't know, the shape, the tooling of the foam, uh, underfoot, when my foot would hit the ground, all the pressure would just break down the medial side. And it was like causing me to pronate so bad. And for those who are going to blast me and be like, overpronation is not a bad thing. It's the body's natural <laughs> form of shock absorption. You are correct. Overpronation is not a bad thing, but it's a bad thing when it's excessive overpronation and I can feel it causing my Achilles pain because of the amount that I'm snapping inward. So like even after one run, like my left Achilles was starting to get sore. I even put a pair of, like arch supporting insoles. I grabbed some Curexes. I put some Curex insoles in here to see if that would help with the stability part. And it did a little bit, which made it tolerable for a slightly longer run. So I went like 16 miles in the shoe and I did it, but my Achilles was very sore afterwards. So then I called it, I called it at that. So I guess ultimately what the deal breakers were for me was that I couldn't, I couldn't get a, a correct, a good lockdown on the upper and just the shape of this shoe underfoot, it just didn't work. What I think would help are a few things. One, I think the, sh the whole platform needs to flare out a little bit more. It needs to be a little bit wider. I mean, we're talking a 10 millimeter drop, 36 and a half millimeters in the heel of like one of the softest foams on the market. So unless your foot just happens to match the curvature of the shoe perfectly and you have like a very efficient foot strike, you're probably going to run into stability issues. So that was one of the things that I learned is like it probably just needs to be flared out a little more or they need to decrease that drop a little bit. But even then, I'm not convinced that would solve the problem. I think I think they just need to uh, widen the base in a way to evenly distribute the forces so that way it doesn't just come crashing down on the medial side. Because like running flat or uphill in the shoe, I can feel the magic is there in the fuel cell foam. Like it's almost so fun. Like the shoe's light. It's very bouncy. The carbon plate has a little bit of flex on paper. It's like everything I've wanted if I were to design my own trail super shoe. But then like the ratio of ingredients, like just got totally thrown off. Um, so that was why I only got in 30 miles in the shoe and why it ultimately became so disappointing. The other thing too, is I'm just going to take it out. Like what, look at this insole. <laughs> this is from Payless. This is, a, this is a like Payless, like this insole's trash. And I appreciate New Balance um, trying to 
increase the breathability. But this insole made it feel like a cheese grater under the forefoot because there's just so many holes and you can feel all of them. So it looks brand new because I only went one run in these insoles before I swapped them out. Finn, do you it, want to see a second version of this shoe? I do. There, there was one thing I was thinking about, like the construction of this shoe, because you said like materials, great. It's the ratios that are the issue. The, the analogy here is like that, like valedictorian level student in their senior year who is trying super hard and is building something amazing until they find out that they got into Harvard and they can just coast the rest of the year. And they just sort of gave up after that. That is this shoe for me. Um, so I do, I do want to see like a sophomore or a junior build this shoe instead when, when they, while they still care. Um, hot take, maybe not a hot take. Do you think if New Balance had a few more people on their trail team and like got in more active wear testing, this wouldn't have happened? Yeah. I mean, like, do you think that this was just their road designers slapping a trail outsole on a super shoe and calling it a trail super shoe? Potentially. I think that, that I mean, yeah, potentially. Because I have, I don't have high hopes for version two of the shoe, just with how back and forth New Balance has been with Trail. But I think this whole version two needs a bit of an overhaul, um, which is tough because I don't even have like a shoe in their lineup that I would say like model it after. Um, you know, I would stay like continue to model it after the Super Comp Trainer, but just like make it work for Trail. You know, uh, and I think, I think that involves like, you know, making the upper or not the upper, well, fixing the upper, putting, making it a little more trail, trail worthy, and then flaring out the heel and under the midfoot, you know, like they could fill in this gap. Like even if the shoe gains a half an ounce because of midsole foam, like I'm okay with that if it works because it, it, it really was a fun shoe. I could feel that the magic was there but it's not worth getting injured over. So um, I hope I hope we see a, a second version of this shoe. I hope New Balance tries again because they've got all the right ingredients. They just got to put all the parts together to make an amazing shoe. Brett, I have one question for you before we go. And for the audience, maybe on, on, the, on the heel cup of this shoe, we've got some Illuminati-esque signs. We've got a circle. We've got a triangle and some waves. All I could think about was Nicolas Cage and National Treasure trying to decipher some shit. What's going on here? I was thinking like Grand Theft Auto, PlayStation, like unlimited money cheat code. <laughs> like circle, triangle, circle, triangle, up, down, left, right. Uh, circle, circle. Um, yeah, does anyone know what those shapes mean? Um, if if what if you, what you think we said was totally BS and not true at all, and you still wanted to try the shoe out, we do have a link available uh, in the show notes where you can try the shoe out uh, from our friends at Running Warehouse. Or maybe, you know, all of our dislikes were exactly what you're looking for for a shoe. Like maybe if you're someone who supinates a lot and do does actually wish that some shoes had less support under the medial side, there are some people out there, 5% of runners are supinators. This could actually be uh, be one worth looking into, but uh, hopefully that hopefully this is the last um, review that we had to cut short. You know, for a while we've got a couple. Well, our next review after this, we we're taking it to the full hundred. That's the Brooks Cascadia yep. seventeen. We will be taking that uh, to the full hundred miles and giving our full breakdown of that. And then we've got a couple couple more shoes after that. Uh, that actually should be arriving any minute now to your doorstep so yeah that's that's the new balance super comp trail 